hello everybody welcome to this latest webinar in meridian west's thought leadership in action series uh really excited to have uh with us today two uh fantastic guests to talk about a fantastic uh campaign i'll introduce them uh in a second uh along with uh, my colleague bertie who's joining uh, us today a uh, quick intro for me i'm alistair beddo i'm the managing director here at meridian west for the last two decades, we've been supporting professional firms uh, carry out and, and execute fantastic thought leadership campaigns. Uh, this webinar series is a case study series showcasing some of the uh, some of the leading campaigns that we've been working on um, and sharing uh, some secrets of their success. Um, unsurprisingly, over the last few years, the topic of the future of work has really risen up the corporate agenda, but it's a really fascinating topic that our guests today have been exploring uh, way longer uh, since uh, the onset of the pandemic. It's been a, a kind of big, uh, big uh, issue for, for JLL, exploring how corporate organisations are changing their thinking around workforce, uh, workplace uh, and workspace. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Marie Preborough. Uh, she's Global Head of Research for JLL's Corporate Solutions Team. Um, and also Rishia Walia, who uh, is a director in the Works Dynamic Research Team uh, across JLL in EMEA. Uh, also my colleague Bertie Happel, uh, a senior consultant here at Meridian West, who's worked very closely with me on JLL's Future of Work campaign, which is our focus for conversation today. Um, we're going to be hearing from uh, Marie and Rishia about some of the um, secrets of the success of their campaign, um, and also from Bertie uh, as well. We want to give you the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have. Um, so there's a Q&A function uh, which you can use and we'll leave some time at the end uh, to, to pick those up. Uh, but do throw in questions as, as we go through because we may be able to cover some of those as well. Um, this session is also recorded. Um, so if it's of interest to you and you want to share it with any colleagues, uh, we will, will be showing you a link to that afterwards so you can uh, share the learnings uh, from today. But big thanks, uh, Marie, Risha, for um, for joining us today. Um, we've obviously been working together for a long time. Um, and I know, you know, the future work is a big topic of interest for JLL. Perhaps you could start by setting the scene a little bit about how this particular campaign uh, came about for, for JLL. Yes, thank you. And thank you for inviting us, uh, Alistair, to talk about it because we've been working uh, such a long time together. So it's a uh, it's a great topic. I mean, and as you said in your introduction, the topic of the future of work is super important for us. I mean, it's uh, it's my number one priority uh, for for the business, but also for uh, you know for 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 our client. And we started our story uh, many years ago uh, when we think about uh, you know the future of work. Uh, and if you don't mind, I just quickly share you know one uh, you know one slide, sure. uh, so you guys can uh, understand uh, you know. Where we came, uh, where we came from, we started, uh, you know, a future of work survey in 2011. It was more about understanding the, uh, you know, the industry where it was. Uh, I joined JLL in 2015, and that's when the the real estate survey turned into the future of work, uh, you know, survey. We've evolved uh, significantly since uh, the 2015 uh, survey, which we had in place, and started engaging with, uh, uh, you know, Meriden West to to boost the quality of the sample and really target, uh, you know, the right person. So we had several evolution of the survey until. Uh, uh, the one which we released in uh, in uh, uh, August, actually this uh, you know this year, and um, and we also at the same time grow the sample. So our objective was to have more refined data, better quality of data, reach out to decision makers across a very large amount of uh, you know of market, and really being able to talk to the right people because that market. Um, and, uh, and and the profiling of the respondents is extremely uh, you know important. So the story unfolds over over many years and and will evolve uh, over the you know the coming years. And obviously, future of work is a is a big topic and it covers lots of the different um, service areas and propositions that JLL offers mm -hmm. its its clients. What what was, what's the kind of corporate uh, kind of strategic goals, if you like, behind behind this project? Why, why does JLL invest so much kind of time and, and effort into it? Well, I mean, the future of work for, for us, the topic is um, 
the key priorities for the extreme large majority of our clients. So we look after a very large portfolio of a major client around the world. So those are the, the, the Fortune 500. Um, and we uh, work in partnership with them to improve the way, you know, they manage their real estate, manage their, their portfolio, but also operate, you know, their workplace. And you've all heard about the pandemic over the last two years, and clearly the topic about workplace, um, the role that the workforce plays into organization has just jumped to the top. Um, so our clients want to understand the market dynamic behind it. Number one, they want to know, okay, what's happening? How is uh, our industry reacting to it? And what are our competitors doing? Okay, that's one of the key questions. Now, of course, we can't share um, all uh, of what our competitors is doing, you know, openly. Um, but um, what we can share is an industry perspective. It's uh, a country uh, level, you know, analysis. So we put basically the data into the context of the market of our, you know, of our clients. And, and that's what we were looking for working with uh, you, Alison Bertie, is uh, being able to have a data set which was large enough so it covers the key market. So, you know, the usual G8 market plus, uh, you know, others, everybody has the same, but also, uh, you know, target decision makers which are equivalent to our clients. So global CRE directors. FM directors, workplace directors, sustainability direct, anybody involved into changing uh, workplace and portfolio in an organization. So given you outlined the kind of central strategic importance of, of the campaign for, for JLL, let's maybe kind of walk through the, the journey, if you like, from the kind of the start through to the, the execution. So, you know, I think one of the things that struck me working with you here is you know, a huge amount of different stakeholders and interested groups within JLL all with perspectives about themes and ideas they'd want to cover in this campaign. Yeah. Christian Marie, tell us a little bit about how you how you kind of managed uh, that internal engagement side at the start of the uh, of the program. The internal engagement is extremely important. OK, um, and we spoke about it, uh, Alistair, when we prepared this, you know, this webinar. Uh, it's not only relying on the partnership with Merritt and West, which make the success of this story. It's also how we really collaborate together and use our business, you know, leaders, experts, subject matter experts to actually help us to construct the right uh, level of, ins of insight that we need to get to. So what are the right questions we need to ask? We can only work with the our business to do that. I mean, you can guide us on how we should ask the question and uh, and how much depth we're going to get out of the question. But the question itself, the business question, the client question, we get that from from the business. So that's why it's, uh, you know, about putting together not only a, a research team, so having the brains on like Richard uh, to help with it, but also having uh, the you know, the expertise from across the business to advise us, to guide us, to validate the output. And we go as far in terms of like uh, uh, working with our stakeholders as far as PR and marketing. So we also look, OK, how can we talk about this story on the market? What can we say? What can't we say? Which word should we use? What language, corporate language, you know, can we use? So there's a lot of stakeholders. Uh, to give you an idea, we probably had 15 people on our side involved into this, uh, you know, this project, uh, including researchers, some uh, members of uh, of our, um, you know, uh, uh, business team and uh, marketing and PR would be another 15, uh, you know, people on, on top of that. Mm -hmm. And what, what was your experience like, Richard, kind of as, as part of that team, you know, managing different perspectives and, and, and trying to reach agreement on all of that? Well, uh, we we are used to it. Uh, first of all, shall I put it that way? Uh, and I think uh, we tend to work closely with them anyway. We try and understand what the what the strategy is for the business, not just uh, you know for the next 
12 months, but then what is their long term plan? So we are aware of how uh, what direction they want to head in. So we we uh, that's why we we've got a research calendar that uh, you know that we align to our business priorities. Uh, so it's a, a, so what I'm trying to say it's 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 not a last minute or project by project, but it's a constant engagement with the business and. I think that makes it easier because we are closer to the pulse of the business and we work closely with them, not just on one project, but throughout. So they know and they can see the value that we bring to the business, to the clients. Uh, so, you know, it's 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 that relationship uh, between the business and the research team, that trust and then, uh, you know, the. Uh, uh, the insights that we generate, not just for our clients, but, uh, you know, positioning ourselves as thought leaders in the market. So it's it's um, in terms of, uh, you know, that's that's our internal partnership. But uh, obviously we can uh, you know talk at length about the whole process. Yes, so it's it's almost like a partnership, internal partnership, but obviously, uh, you know, the external partnership with you guys uh, also helps us bring that uh, to life and achieve those goals. And, and Bertie, I guess, kind of, you know, sitting as part of the, the Meridian West team, you know, I know when we work together, not just on this project, but on other projects, often the, you know, one of the critical success factors is, you know, really kind of zeroing in on key objectives, key themes, managing those disparate points of view at the outset. Do you have any kind of thoughts on, you know, how, how that can be done successfully and, and what the experience was like from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, you know, one of the things that made this this project so successful was that that buy in that that um, Marie spoke about that kind of um, um, uh, consensus amongst um, a, a large a large number of different stakeholders. But that that of course does come with with challenges as well. You know, when we were put, putting together the, the survey to go out uh, to to, to fields um, for this project, there was there was a lot of different things that needed to be uh, needed to be included, and I think we had some hard some quite tough decisions to that, that we had to make about what we what we ended up leaving out but um <clears throat> you know certainly i think i think i think having having that buy in and having that kind of um um input from from um from um you know different um um experts i suppose within jlal meant that um at the other end of it um there was uh, you know a lot of appetite to really squeeze as much value as possible out of the results and yeah certainly that's something that i you know, I, I I I could sense from 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 my side that it was it was being used very very wi uh, widely within JLL. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's something we'll we'll come on to I think in a, in a second. Um, I'm also just interested, Bertie, just any thoughts on on the kind of the research process itself? So you know, from what we saw from Marie before, you know, this was very extensive. Um, you know, over a thousand bits of um, you know. Uh, kind of uh, survey responses from from different um, decision makers, you know, global territories, um, multi-language. Kind of how how you know how how can you manage that kind of process successfully? What are some of the kind of key key learnings from from managing a global research project like that from your perspective? So I think I think um, you know first first off it's it's to do with 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 preparation um, as to what actually goes into the survey itself. So you know I've already said that. Real, you know, real estate within the survey itself is is at a premium, so it's it's making sure that what we have in there is is very valuable. It's also making sure that what we have in there is 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 clear and translatable um, when we're talking about all the different geographies that we, uh, we we touched upon. And I think I think when we put put together the survey, we were um, we were mindful of that that as well. Um, you know, we we ran it past local teams within JLL to make sure that. You know, uh, things things made sense. Um, you know, from from there, um, you know, within the kind of you know data collection um, phase, you know, we we're, we're we're talking about such a um, such a kind of you know targeted audience. It's really you know CRE leaders, uh, facilities management leaders within within kind of large organisations. It's it, there's a limited sample um, to collect there, and I think there's a lot of um, kind of due diligence that has to be made that has to be done as the sample comes in to to make sure that the data that we have is is um you know 100 percent um correct and and um and um and and legit so um yeah there's i think there's the the element of of um of kind of preparing ahead of time but then there's also keeping on top of things as it as it goes through as well and i know obviously as i said you know this results in, in a 
collection of a large amount of data, mm. um, you know, across different themes, different angles, lots of areas to explore. I guess one of the other key milestones as part of this process is then, you know, the analytics, how how you draw kind of meaning from that data. And Marie Risher, again, I'd be interested in your your kind of takeaways from the process. I know we ended up kind of distilling you know, big set of data down into to five messages. Can you tell us a little bit how that came about? Yeah, and I think that's that's where the strength of the partnership with Married and West, uh, you know, comes in. Uh, is having, uh, you know, Bertie with a, a brain on the data, brain on the statistics, to really bring to the top the key messages. And and you know, you also, uh, you know, they are listed to to turn those, you know, key data into powerful messages, uh, you know, for us. Um, but the ability to dive, cut the da the data profiling uh, against a different uh, uh, type of organization. I mean, we, we use a profiling uh, methodology, uh, uh, which is very detailed. Uh, I think that's 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 why we work with you. OK, uh, and, and the advantage is that you have a neutral eye on it. OK, if we were to give that to uh, to our business, uh, um, they probably would pick up the industry sector and don't care about the rest. Uh, but you cut through the data and uh, you can give us a panorama of uh, differences across the industry sector, across countries or cultures, uh, but also dive down to the level of uh, analyzing enterprise which are really well ahead of the game. OK, what are they doing right? I think that's also a very significant uh, you know, advantage. So the data analysis, um, we could, of course, do it ourselves, but you need to have the brain of a statistician like Bertie, uh, you know, on board to really help, you know, dive in and digest, uh, you know, the result. And I think that gives us that baseline, the foundation. We said, OK, we're sitting on something which is very robust. OK, the data are clean. <laughs> They've been analyzed, they've been cut, you know, into so many ways. We know that, OK, what is there a really valid, uh, you know, uh, uh, key messages and uh, and result. And I think that's that's where the power of the relationships uh, for me comes in, in terms of data uh, analytics. And Richard Marie was alluding there to the some of the, the profiling. We had this kind of maturity. Uh, approach that we we looked at. Can you maybe say a little bit about, you know, why that was important and and how that came about the, the maturity profiling? Uh, yes, Celeste. So I'll uh, I guess two parts to this uh, question. One, uh, why is it important? Because we work with a wide range of uh, client set, and you know they are some of them on some aspects would be leading some might be on the path so it just helps us have that relevant conversation the conversation that we you know it gives us the the proof points and how and we are able to advise based on the data that if you want to move from the on the path to into leading these are the uh you know the, these are the lessons that need to be learned from the leaders so i think that is not coming out of thin air that's based on all the deep dive that bertie undertakes so as Marie mentioned, we are sitting on a, we've got a strong foundation of the data. So that's one. And second, I think the way we come out uh, with the maturity, of course, you know, we always put our heads together uh, like we do on several projects. Uh, we come up with the criteria for maturity. Uh, it's really based on what are the actions um, and, um, you know, what should be the traits? And it's based on our intelligence. It's based on our understanding of those traits of maturity and that forward looking view. Uh, and it's and obviously you, know, you guys help us run those models and you also bring in new insights that we are not aware of. So it's, uh, you know, that's I think that's where this partnership between Meridian West and uh, I think JLN internal team, I think that's uh, that is where uh, you know we find it valuable. And obviously, lots of lots of interesting stuff coming from the the research. I mean, Marie, maybe just give us a flavour of one or two of the key headlines that you you found most interesting, most kind of surprising. The research, the the things that had the most kind of impact for you. What what, what springs to mind? Well, I mean, one big thing is that we were searching for uh, evidence 
to support what we were observing with our client, that hybrid was becoming the model of transformation uh, for the, the extreme large majority of organization. And <coughs> apologies. And throughout uh, you know, the pandemic, we, we've seen it evolve, but that gave us you know, that big headline that hybrid is here to stay. Strong evidence are showing that it's there. Don't ignore it. Uh, and I think uh, it's easy to say it because a lot of our competitors actually came out with similar statement, but with no evidence behind it. We have the evidence and that makes a big difference. I tell you, clients said, OK, we know that, but prove it to me. So the, being able to prove it to them is, is really important. The other thing which really came out is this topic around the role that the office is playing uh, into all of this, that no, we are not abandoning offices. We are not running away from offices and they're going to be here for a very long time. But we need to transform the experience of the workforce when they come to the office. And you see those headlines, they give us fantastic visibility. I mean, we had some fantastic success with this, uh, uh, you know, report. Um, we had more than 80 uh, tier one press article. OK, our president was on CNN Live, uh, was on Yahoo Finance. Uh, we published into the Wall Street Journal. We we published into Fortune. We, we were we were everywhere. OK, and that that is giving us the, the brand visibility because at the end of the day this is a brand visibility that media um the media attracts attention to, uh, of our clients our clients come back to us come back to reach out to myself say hey marie seen your report i had this case yesterday uh, fortune fund marie pick up the phone we need to speak i want you to present to my clients so to, to my team so so that's you know the reverse effect is that uh, the client asking us to step in and stepping in means engaging the clients in a conversation means bringing our, our our expert, our consultant expert to actually find a solution. So it's it's a snowball effect, but you 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 emit uh, a lot of appetite um, across the market for this type of insight. But the data, the data is providing you the evidence that everybody was waiting for. And it sounds like from the way you describe it that, you know, because everyone wants to get, you know, with their campaigns into the Wall Street Journal, onto CNN, onto these big flagship uh, yeah. platforms. Um, but it sounds like from what you're saying, key success to that was having the data, was having the evidence. Yes. Why, why else do you think that the press were kind of picked up? Uh, in such such a big way, the the campaign. What what do you think interested them most? I think I think that the topic is on the mind of everybody at the moment. Um, I mean, uh, the press pickups on, uh, on 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 things which are relevant now. Now, uh, our research is about the future of work. So the relevance now help us to target the media. The forward looking uh, aspect of the survey, because we've asked a lot of questions about. What are you doing now? What are you going to do by 25, beyond 2025? So the future is what is going to help us, Richard and I, to think about the what's next, to anticipate where are going to be, uh, you know, the needs in the future. And I can tell you that aside of the media, and I shared with you some of the article here, is that our business is picking up the learning from the Future of Work survey and saying, OK, we've got an answer now. OK, we've got to we've got to build up our service offering. We have to develop new offering because the future of work survey is telling us tech is going to be uh, investment are going to double down. Boom. OK, so we're getting ready for the next uh, wave uh, of uh, of uh, demand. Uh, there's always a, a gap between where the market is and where they anticipate to be in the future. And you've got to fill this gap. And I think that's that's where the survey for us is tremendously, uh, you know, important. Um, and just um, just to kind of reminder for people, if anyone's got any questions for Richard or Marie uh, or Bertie, uh, do put them in the the chat or the Q and A uh, function because we want to make sure we we cover those as well. Um, I wonder, just kind of starting to tie some of these 
threads together in terms of kind of key key lessons for success. Um, you know, Richard, what what are some of the things that you would say you've you've learned from from this experience on the future work campaign that you'd you know hope to take forward into kind of future work with JLL? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, you know, it's that. Um, I know that from the very outset of the project, it's communicating. And I think we speak almost every week, sometimes even twice a week, because we believe uh, that it's 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 a collaborative process. It's not as though here's here's what needs to be done, run with it. I think we need to shape it together. We need to play to each other's uh, strengths. So wherein we can bring in the, uh, obviously we'll, we'll know about the business priorities and the kind of questions you help us ask those questions and frame those questions properly and obviously with the field work that's where that, that's where your strength and uh you know your previous question um i'd like to add that why did the media pick because we were able to uh, you were able to target thousand plus cre decision makers who are indirectly representing thousands hundreds and thousands of employees so you know that's a big voice and i think that's that's the other advantage which is you know your strength so I think in terms that's that's the key point of uh, this collaborative approach, that weekly dialogue, that shaping and refining it together. Uh, I think that's 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 really core to the process. Marie, would you like to add something? Yeah, to that? I t t totally agree with you, Richard. I think uh, uh, it worked extremely well because we had a very, very strong cross collaboration between your team and our team. I think if we were just to 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 tell uh, you know you Alice uh, Mary and West say here you go here's a mission deliver the report of course you, you, you would do it but it wouldn't have matched what we really needed to say. And um, I think that for us, the, the, the load of this research is about transforming what you provide us, this evidence, this data, the key message which, uh, you know, come to the top into a corporate output, which is meaningful for our business and for our client. And, and I strongly believe this is something which lies with us, with JNL. Um, you know, that, that transformation and the adaptation of the learning to the corporate world of real estate is something which is on us. Um, and so that's why it's uh, it's uh, the, the, the partnership is, is really beautifully coming together, you know, there. Uh, mm. yeah, absolutely. And, and Bertie, I'm kind of keen to get your any of your lessons learned or, or things that you'd you'd want to relate to the audience here in terms of what, what makes a project like this so successful. What, what would you highlight? I, I think it was 100 percent the level of collaboration that we had. I, I agree with Richard on that. I think I think you know us us being able to to, to collect the data, but also having um, you know significant steer from Richard and from Marie about kind of what what what's important to the business, what's important to to to, to JLL was was really useful. And and from that we were able to 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 kind of you know um, you know glean these these kind of key key insights and 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 really you know touch touch a, a wide range of audiences yeah but you know just just one one thing uh, on on this alistair i think you know of course if we look back there's probably some question we would have asked differently there are something we would have changed i mean there's always a lot of learning coming out of uh, you know our, our survey you know work and adjustment which we want to take for the next one yeah it's never 100 percent perfect uh, but uh, if you can reach 95 percent, then that's a, a massive, uh, massive success. Uh, so. And I guess particularly when you've got these, you know, these big topics which are, you know, against the background of COVID and things changing, you know, oh, month yeah. by month. So, you know, I, I, yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. And if it was just, uh, you know, with us and we talked about that, you know, we would have a question or 45 question because we have 45 questions to ask. But you pushing us down to say, no, Marie, it won't work. You've got to come down to 20. So um, so I think that's uh, also a lot of the learning which comes out of this is, uh, you know, the, the partnership is 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 a is a mutual discussion and listening from both, uh, both sides. Yeah. And some hard, hard choices on, on both sides. But I think it's it's worth the worth the pain uh, to, to kind of uh, get the outcome that, that JLLs have got. And I think fantastic 
you know, outcome. I know Marie, you've, you've kind of shared on the chat some of the example kind of coverage and articles, but also great to hear that there's been such a demand both internally within JLL from colleagues, you know, wanting to understand how the research can support their account management, business development, proposition development, but also from clients to to really understand how they compare to the market. I think we could talk about this uh, this campaign for 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 hours, but um, we have reached our time. Uh, I want to just thank you again. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Marie. Thanks also to Bertie. Um, thanks for the audience uh, joining us. Um, please do look out for our next Thought Leadership uh, in Action uh, very soon. We'll be sending details of that and we'll also be sending the uh, webinar recording uh, shortly so you can forward that on to any colleagues who you think would benefit from the insights today as well. So thanks for joining. Thanks again, Marie. Thank you. Thank you.